Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about which is more dangerous, whether AC or DC, meaning alternating current or direct current. Somewhere we heard about it, alternating current is more danger because of so and so reason. Somewhere we heard about it, direct current is more danger because of so and so reason. But in this video, we are going to clearly discuss about which is more danger with some example. First, we can start to discuss about what is AC current. Before start to discuss about AC current, already we discussed in our earlier video about AC current and how we can generate AC current and we discussed about DC current, how we can generate a DC current, all this information we already discussed. I have mentioned those videos in the description, so please watch it. Yeah, now we can first start to uh, discuss about what is AC current in one or two terms. Like AC current, which reverses direction over a time period and the current switches directly direction back and forth and the AC current will be used in the household appliances like lights, fans and all those areas. And important thing is voltage is a, taken as a driving force for current and alternating current flows in the form of sine wave and very important in AC current is frequency. So the number of cycles completed in a second is known as frequency. So frequency of 50 hertz means current completes 50 cycles in one second. So we hear in the way in our uh, house uh, the current comes like 220 volt to 230 volt meaning AC will come in 220 volt to 230 volt and 50 hertz. This is what we hear. So the 50 hertz means the current completes 50 cycles in one second. Now we can discuss uh, some one or two terms about DC current. DC current means it's a direct current. So current flows in only one direction and it can be found in electronic circuits, batteries in all those areas. So at the same time it will does not reverse its direction and flows in the straight path while the polarity remains constant and DC does not fl flow in sinusoids or nor changes its direction. So it does not have a frequency. This is basic difference between alternating current and direct current. Now we can start to discuss about which uh, what causes an electric shock. So basically the electric shock is because of current or voltage. Before start to discuss this, first we have to understand the amount of current. For an example, electric shock with an alternating current of 15 to 20 milliampere can be extremely painful. So you can imagine now just 15 to 20 milliampere can be extremely painful. And electric shock with 100 milliampere may cause death as well. So very important thing here is actually current is very important factor which causes an electric shock not the voltage right perfect. So current is the flow of charge that move from higher potential point to lower potential point and the voltage however is equally important it determines the magnitude of the current. So you, you, you are getting now why voltage is important and the same can be understood through the Ohm's law. So might be you all heard about the word called Ohm's law and I will plan a separate video to understand more deeper about Ohm's law. And Ohm's law states that voltage and current are directionally, directly proportional to each other. So we can consider like V equal to IR. So I equal to V divided by R. So this is basically called Ohm's law. And very important factor we need to consider or remember is current kills, not the voltage. But the voltage is necessary to drive the current. Example, amperes are responsible for electrocution, not the volt. That's what I said, amount of the current, which is the matter. Okay, now we can start to discuss about why does the human body feel the current shock? What is the reason? So, first of all, first we have to understand the resistance of our human body. So, we can consider in a way, whenever we are feeling or getting a current shock, First, it will touch our skin, right? The human body has its own resistance to electric current which varies throughout the body. The skin having the most resistance of about like 1 lakh ohms while the internal body having at least 300 to 500 ohms. So the body feels an electric shock mainly due to the effect of heating and stimulation of nerves and muscles. The resistance of the body to the current causes energy to dissipate which results in a heat effect or even burns. So now we can imagine once the tissue tissue breakdown of the skin occurs, the body provides a lower resistance path to the current because our blood, muscles and organs contain many ions which help the current to pass. And the flow of charges inside the body is then accompanied by muscular contractions and ventricular fibrillation. So this is the reason why human body is actually feel the current shock. 
now we are going to discuss about which favor of some example like uh, um, uh, in which perspective people said about dc current is more uh, danger in which perspective ac current uh, might be more danger that's we can discuss because after this discussion we can come to the conclusion of which is more danger and before start to discuss about the behavior of dc current first we can understand the path of current so when some human is touching or feeling electric shock how the current will flow will be in our body for an example the current passing from the right hand to the right leg can be painful but when it passes from the right hand to the left hand throughout the heart may cause ventricular fibrillation this condition is usually fatal and one more thing is time duration is also very important thing so so how much amount of time the electric shock will be passed in our body that's also important matter to decide which is more danger okay first we can start to uh, discuss about like uh, uh, what is in the favor of uh, dc so you we can consider in a way i am getting an electric shock so i have experienced the electric shock with dc current that they are unable to pull their hand back because dc current flows continuously that's we all knows it so this is what the fact people used to say that dc current is more danger the effect is similar to an electric doorbell supplied with a dc current because it's constant supply and it's more danger at at the same same time in case of ac current the person who is experiencing the electric shock can pull their hand back as the current goes to zero because in the sinusoidal wave or in once in one point current will reach zero so in that case current will release the human or we can also take our hand back so in perspective when someone is considering they used to say that dc is more danger yeah but we should not go for the decision dc is more danger only by understanding these points now we can discuss about the favor of ac current as well so when the person is experiencing an electric shock the focus of the person is to get to ride off it and save their life but what's happening internal to the muscles cannot be known because you might be heard about it some people who actually felt a more electric shock in the household appliances they used to say my muscle has still have a problem i'm feeling uh, tired or kind of some problem inside the muscles so according to mr charles dalsel's experiments of men and women muscle contraction is continuous in case of an electric shock with the dc current whereas in the case of ac current a person experiencing electric shock undergoes a series of muscle contractions so you can imagine now when someone felt from the dc side the muscle contraction is continuous but in the case of electric shock in the dc side but when we are thinking about in the ac side the muscle contraction if there will be a, there will be some problem a series of muscle contraction cause very severe damage to the muscles so that is important factor and due to the capacity behavior of the skin so what is the capacity uh, behavior of the skin what will happen for an example the outermost layer of our skin acts as a dielectric the internal sweat glands and tissues act like one plate of capacitor and a metal piece carrying electric current acts like another plate of the capacitor due to this capacitive effect you can you hope you got the point of capacitive effect here the current passes through the body rapidly changing voltage allows more current to pass through the body this is called as a capacitive effect okay due to this capacitive behavior of the skin coming in contact with the current carrying conductor more current can pass through the body if the voltage is rapidly changing and dc is let go threshold is higher than the ac is let go threshold so more dc current is required to produce a similar effect as ac current that is a very important point i want to say here so by considering a favor of ac current might be we are coming to say that like yeah then ac is more danger than dc but in earlier when we discussed favor of dc point of view we decided like in a way dc is more danger but what i am telling now is we no need to take a decision right now we can still see some more additional points then we can go to then we will take a decision which is more danger yeah now we will take some additional important factor we can consider in a way for an example we are not we are in a dry condition okay we are not in wet so in that case for the resistance of our body obviously will be more but when we are in a wet or in a sweaty condition cause the skin to significantly reduce resistance you can see this uh, slide for an example finger when we are in a dry when we are in a dry 40k to 1 mega ohm but when we are in a wet obviously see that 4k to 15k ohm so that is the reason people used to say that when you are wet or when you are sweaty condition we should not play with the electrical wires 
that is a one of the reason why people used to say that might be now we are coming up with an example but this table as was developed by huon hoven and milner from their experiment i have taken some samples so you can see now the hand holding wire the dry condition how much ohms and the wet condition at the same time like palm touch and finger and pump cramps some crafts so these all are the things actually vary between dry and wet because this is also one of the important consideration and we can take one more example you can consider in a way might be you heard about it high body fat people has a high resistance that's true so human body fat has a high resistance so we can take two people having different body fats the person with a higher percentage of body fat will experience a less severe shock this compared to the person with lower fat and one more thing is alternating current can cause stimulation of sweat glands and induce sweating thus lowering our body resistance which will consequently increase the shock current and the time duration of electric shock is very important that's what i said some milliamperes also creating a very fatal situation so the time duration of electric shock is very important we can take example like the severity of the injuries increase with the duration of time even a small current of 0.0 milliamps can be painful if held on for too long and fibrillation can occur within 0.2 seconds at 500 milliamps while it can take 0.5 seconds at 75 milliamps you can you can think now so the time duration is also important factor might be you heard somewhere else someone has a problem because of electric shock then you have to consider or calculate all this perspective and now we can we are going to discuss about how we can like uh, ac voltage and can current can be how it can be represented in the form of uh, sine wave and how we can do the calculation of peak that means minimum peak and maximum peaks there is a two peaks generally there that's we can do it via rms root mean squared calculation or value so you can see the slide here just i have mentioned two images like of ac side how we can do calculation so the generally rms values the of ac current and voltage which produce the same level of heating effect as dc so rms can be considered as an ac values equivalent to dc and at the same time dc does not have a sinusoidal waveform it will have only it will not have any rms value so at it dc has only a constant peak value so that is the only thing will be maintained in uh, when we are taking example of uh, rms for uh, dc so this calculation will be helpful for you to calculate uh, to understand the voltage minimum peak and maximum peak and dangerous values of ac and dc that's we can discuss now and before start to discuss this point we can take some example of ac and dc equal power then it's helpful for you to come to the conclusion which has more danger okay now you know rms values and rms calculation we can take let's suppose we have a 220 volt rms ac okay at the same time 220 volt dc so what do you think will be more danger you can consider like 220 volt ac 220 volt dc for an example 220 volt being an rms value for ac its peak value will be 311 volt by using this calculation okay hence it will be having a higher value of current some point but one thing should be kept in mind it's not the voltage but the current that causes an electric shock that's what we discussed in in this uh, video and apart from the voltage current will also be dependent on the body resistant therefore the value of the resistance is matter more than the same level of ac and dc power the lower resistance of the current path the greater will be electric shock so that's what i just derived one table here uh, meaning this is also referred from someone exam this will give you more clarity to take a decision about which is more danger you can take you can see this slide 0. Point milliamps like ac 50 or 60 hertz but in india we are having an household is 50 hertz okay and dc is 1 milliamps but effect is slight sensation but you can see 1 to 10 milliamps in ac but in dc 5.2 to 62 milliamps painful sensation in ac 10 to 16 milliamps but in dc 76 milliamps but parallel is of amps cannot release grip you can imagine a situation now 23 to 30 milliamps in ac with 50 hertz frequency that is matter that's you should keep in your mind and 90 milliamps in dc respiratory paralysis and obstructive breathing and you can see the 75 to 250 milliamps in ac with 50 hertz and dc is 500 milliamps this will lead to the ventricular fibrillation heart starts 
curing there will be a uh, irregular heartbeat we can say so we from this table and this slide we come to know that like ac and dc both are danger there is no doubt on that but see the value in ac side when we have a 0.4 milliamps but in dc 1 milliamps that's that's what we can make it to equal so that's what so larger magnitude of dc is required to cause the same effect as compared to uh, ac so now we are going to first then we will additionally we'll see that the effect of frequency 50 hertz ac is more fatal than the 2000 or 4000 hertz or 5 hertz of ac of the same magnitude the reason being 50 and 60 hertz the electrical pulses from the shock stimulate the body muscles and interfere with our own nervous system for we can take one example here as well like 50 milliamps and 50 hertz ac is sufficient to cause ventricular fibrillation that's what we are understanding from this slide as well so the heart stops pumping and beats irregularly at the same time 150 milliamps of dc will be needed to produce the same effect so from this analysis we come to know that ac is more danger compared than dc but what i will say now is the conclusion from my point of view is like I want to stress like AC and DC both are danger for us. Electricity should not be taken lightly. So we have to be very carefully handle it and we have to be very safe when we are going to deal with the electric circuits. Okay, take every precaution while work, working on live circuit. And thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends. If you want to stay with us for more technical content in electronics, programming language, autos or other related data, please subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.